This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Action Furnace. Fixed right or it's free. What are your thoughts on this whole kind of new concept of having one line in a grocery store that's really slow on purpose at the checkout? Does it speed up the other ones? There was this grocery store, it was in Europe or something, but they tested it out because they knew that a lot of seniors were really lonely. Mm -hmm. So they said, we encourage you to take your time in this one specific checkout line. really cute. Chat with the person that's working, uh, chat with other people in the line, no pressure. And it took off, and now there's over 200 grocery stores that do it, including... It was just announced yesterday that there's a Sobeys in Belmont. Friesen Brothers opened on the south side, and uh, I went and I was like, man, if it wasn't for like kind of in w- not wanting to dilly dally mm. around other humans, um, I would have spent all day in that grocery store. I liked it so much. So I kind of get it. Like grocery shopping can be something that you don't hate and mm. have to rush. Like it's actually quite a beautiful. Not the prices, but everything <laughs> yeah. else is quite a beautiful process of picking out like the nutrients and vitamins that your body needs for the day. Ew, I am so disagreeing. <laughs> uh, but I also can't cook, so it's a I hate it. Yeah, like I like squeezing all the um, the breasts. Can you n- not? What? Like, like I was even going to be mad when you said I thought you were going to say bread or even lemons, and I'm like, don't touch everything. Oh yeah, the lemons. But then you had to go with the. <laughs> Like the chicken Stop. breasts. Anyway. <laughs> the balls, the meatballs. What is your opinion with the slow line? I think with my bad luck, I would end up in it by accident. Oh, he'd be a total Karen in I there wouldn't too, have hey? my glasses on, so I wouldn't see the sign. Mm-hmm. There's probably going to be a massive sign that says, this is a slow line. Take your time. And I'd be like, what's the hold up? Yeah. <laughs> Some of us have somewhere to be and... If you <laughs> <laughs> even though wait, just, <laughs> here's a twist of the story. You don't really have anywhere to be. Okay, that is true. <laughs> but rude. <laughs> uh, so yes, just a heads up, there is one now in Edmonton. Shout out to the Sobies in Belmont. Yeah. What's my f- favorite quote? If you rush through life, you're only going to get to the end faster. Here's the thing though. Nobody's working a full 8 hour shift on that uh, till. Mm. I think you'd have to switch out every three hours with the employees because when the regular named Joe is showing up again Again. to talk about his gingivitis (laughs) for a podcast length (laughs) conversation, it's like, I can't do this. Everyone, Everyone would be quitting. I'll look at different fruit, like inspect it. Hold up the container and make sure I'm getting the right one. Tell everyone you're touching everything. No, no. The plastic container. And also I wash my hands. Unlike you. Excuse you? We've all talked about it. No, you haven't. I wash twice and I sing happy birthday. I go the happy birthday song length with soaps and suds. (laughs) Anyway, uh, take your time in that line. And then, yeah, I think the other ones are going to end up moving quicker. So this is a win-win if you ask me. Okay, so just getting this text here from Janelle. That Sobeys is unbelievably great for customer service in every way. I've only been a couple times. I follow them on Facebook. They do really cool things. Oh, that is the one that does awesome yeah, stuff it all says, the time. Uh, some stuff that isn't typical to find in Canada. They sing and dance and play with the kids. It's amazing. Okay, I want to go there. What? It looks nice, too. It Belmont Sobe, shout out. Do they have the color-coordinated fruit? No, that's the... Um, what place is that? There's a Safeway that does that, uh, I think, on white. Anyway. Uh, yeah, they posted about it. We decided to introduce a social slow checkout line when we discovered some people enjoy chatting while paying for their groceries. And is it the manager in the picture wearing a turkey hat? Yes. Ugh. It's the best. What a gem. Yeah. Okay, well, what do you mean that they sing and dance? Like, Because it's my dream to be out in public, whether it's on public transit or in a grocery store. And all of a sudden, everyone just breaks out into song and it turns into a real life musical. See, now that's when I'd want the fast lane. Get me out of there. <laughs> uh, the snow plows have been named. 15 they went with. Whoa. Because uh, they got such a big response, they originally were just going to name five. They went with 15. I'll go through the names here in a second. But sure. just wondering if uh, now that the important, very important job of naming the snow plows is behind us, if it's unreasonable to ask them, even by name, if they would be interested in going to the residential areas that have had thick snow on them for the last month and drive around and do their job. 
uh, even though it hasn't really snowed in the last month. What is with that? I don't know. So I was driving in a residential area yesterday, and my car just decided to like go on the sidewalk. I was like, oh, okay. Good thing nobody was walking. Uh, I guess this is where yeah, my car into wants it. to venture. Yep. I think they did decrease the budget extremely for snow plowing this year. Okay, well, I can't imagine driving a car because I have an SUV and it still couldn't get through. Yeah. The snow. Yeah, wow, like we a lot sound of... so old right now, but no. these are our tax dollars. I want Connor McBladed to do the residential area. At least it'll get done fast. <laughs> okay. Right? Okay, that was a good one. Thanks. Uh, but seriously, <laughs> you want to do the residential areas yeah, now that you guys you have cool for? names. Yeah, what are you going to do? Just hang out and smoke in a parking lot? Like, we need you to come and do <laughs> some work. Yeah, with cool names like this. Okay, in alphabetical order, we have... Ammer Sleet Snow He. So he said anything? <laughs> I don't know if he's been asked about it. Connor was asked about it. Yeah. Uh, Blizzard of Oz. Nice. Blizzard Wizard. Buzz Ice Clear. <laughs> Connor McBlade It. The best one. Control Salt Delete. Ooh. Darth Blader. Fast and Flurious. Mr. Plow. That's a Simpsons reference. Yeah. Peter Parka. <laughs> Ah. Plowosaurus Rex, Plowy McPl- sorry, Plowy McPlow face. Of course, that had to be in there. Uh, Kinnick, what? which is snowfall, and Inuk Titut dialect. Nice. Cool. Uh, Snow Be Gone Kenobi, and oh. the Big Plowbowski. Okay, so a lot of Plowski, mo- <laughs> the Big Plowski. I love how many movie buffs got in on this. Yeah, yeah. Yours didn't get uh, chosen. Yeah. Are you upset? Plower good. <laughs> no, that is not what you entered. <laughs> when your daughter sat in on our show the other morning, we were talking about how, you know, we have to go to the gym every day because for work, we're just sitting in here. Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, I noticed that. You guys don't get up at all. I was like, calm down. I went pee once. There are some people that think that Andrew Garfield does not have a bad bone in his body, and I hope that's true. <laughs> he seems like just Sweetest. one of the good ones, eh? Yeah, he was on the red carpet just recently. It was the Golden Globes, I think. And he was <laughs> there was somebody who was interviewing him, but flirting with him and wouldn't stand down. She's like, I think we should go on a date. And he handled it so well. He almost seemed interested. It was really cute to watch. He's so kind, very talented, loves musical theater, and he was perfectly cast in Tick, Tick, Boom. In fact, when he was cast, the director who also directed Hamilton threw a shoe at him because he couldn't believe that Andrew Garfield not only could act, but he could sing. Like, he threw a shoe at him being like, are you kidding me? You're How'd this you get talented? all this talent? Yeah. And Tick, Tick, Boom is an incredible film, and he was touring around and promoting it, and that's when he sat down with Stephen Colbert. And he's always asked about his mother, who passed away. It's interesting because in the in the show Tick Tick Boom, it's about the man who not only wrote Tick Tick Boom, which is a, a musical, but also wrote Rent. And he passed away when he was thirty six years old, right before the preview of Rent. Like so the opening he night. Never got to see his own work. Crazy. And Rent is one of the biggest musicals in the world. Mm-hmm. He won all these Tony Awards, even though he wasn't here to to truly feel that, right? Right. So Andrew Garfield plays him in Tick Tick Boom. He was grieving the loss of this character he was playing, who never got to see his art. But at the same time, he could think about his mother all the time, Mm -hmm. who he also lost. But the way he talks about grief, I thought was interesting to share with our listeners, especially if you have lost someone that's close to you. It's just an interesting perspective about it. Yeah, not to be uh, scared of it, but to kind of embrace the grief. It's it's interesting. I've never really heard this take before. I love talking about it, by the way. So if I cry, it's only like... mm -mm. A beautiful thing. This is all the unexpressed love, right? The grief that will remain with us until we pass because we didn't, we never get enough time with each other, right? Mm -hmm. Um, No matter if someone lives till 60, 15 or, you know, 99. So I hope this grief stays with me because it's all the unexpressed love that I didn't get to to tell her. And I told her every day. We all, we, we all told her every day. She was the best of us. I'm indebted to any, any, everyone who's brought me to this place so that I can, I can honor the most beautiful person that I've ever experienced in my life through my art and use it as a way to heal, use it as a way to sew up the wounds. Don't stop talking about the person that's gone because yeah. there are a lot of people that say that light up when you ask, what was this person mm-hmm. like? 
even when uh, my daughter asks about my grandparents, so what would have been her great grandparents? Mm-hmm. She wants to know about what were like, they like. What were they like? And what it's did they so do? awesome to be able to talk about them. So you're right. All right, what do you keep around the house? Apparently, uh, adults keep an average of twenty cho- uh, toys from their childhood. And I was what? really, yeah, I was really thinking about this, and I don't know if I have any. Oh my gosh, I have one. It was a teddy bear that one of my mom's best friends gave me when I was like four. And I still have it, but it's gone through all my nieces. Cute. Like they've all had it, and now it's back with me. Okay. Yeah, and I keep it. I do have about uh, six of the beanie babies but those are like investment properties no they're not well that's what the, that's why i still have them they're not because like i pull them out and play with them once in a while <laughs> i thought i was told that Hi, they were going to be worth money I'm princess diana no that Who one is you? that one is worth money is it though yes actually a lot is it green or purple i can't remember purple wow look at you yeah i was big into the game yeah you were you probably even had them in the plastic uh yeah, containers still dip my toes in it a little bit here and there uh but the dumb thing that i do keep around that's what we're asking you at 780-784-7107 isn't a toy and it's complete nonsense that i have these what is it oh I'll- oh all of your underwear with the holes in the butt no i've seen them in the laundry sometimes I still wear them. I know. Why? Just blowing holes through your underwear? Congrats. This text here says I keep all I the- wasn't done. Oh. oh, I thought that was the answer. No, that's not the answer. It should be the answer. <laughs> okay, what else do you keep though? Oh, you're interested now? I don't know why I was so good at it. I think it's because I was a little bit short, so I'd always stand at the front when brides would throw their garters. Oh, no. So I'd always go in front of everybody and I'd... I'd Ryder, you make it out when you talk like that. You do realize you make it out You like you're five feet tall. You are decently tall. Yeah, I was just a late bloomer. Okay. So when I was like 16, 17, I was still like 5'3". Okay. Yeah. Anyway, everybody's like, oh, it totally makes sense with this personality. No. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. I get in front of the group of people on the dance floor, the dudes, the single dudes that were waiting to catch a garter. And I'd say, okay, back it up, guys. Back it up a little bit. It's going to go farther than this, knowing damn well it wouldn't. And then I'd just hit, get a jump start and I'd be able to dive and grab it. So this, I don't think this is a flex. This works. This is it so embarrassing. Every Why are you telling people this? wedding I was at, I bet I caught, I'm not even kidding, between 15 and 20 garters at I weddings. Believe, I can't believe that many people are inviting you to their wedding. Exactly. And I kept them. And so I have these. <laughs> I don't know what to do with them. What are you doing with them? I don't know. And now they've kind of scattered. Like I put some in certain boxes. Some are like in my underwear drawer. I hate with all the holes. That's what you could do. Fill the holes with them. <laughs> Sew them into my gaunch. Okay. Not a bad idea. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this text here says, I keep all of the random Ikea furniture, Allen keys and wrenches. Why? It's so true. Every time I see an Allen key, I'm like, Allen. Might I'm, need this. Might need you at some point. I've never used one. I have an obscene amount of reusable grocery bags because I always go to the grocery store and I always forget to bring my reusable grocery bags. Yeah, the, I've started like tr- putting my reusable ones right by my shoes, even if I don't plan to go grocery shopping, and I'll just take them out to my car every time I think of it. But how often do you actually grab them yeah, and like put them in your 30% car? 30% of the time. You know what, Carly? At least they're decently priced, you know? Like, you kind of just bite it because you're like, eh, guess I'll yeah. purchase another one. I should really start just leaving them in my car, honestly. They're good, uh, the reusable ones for picking up dog poop, except for some of them have the little holes in it, so not for the wet ones. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's what I used to pick up dog poop. You use reusable bags? No, the no, the plastic ones. Not the reusable I ones, of course not. I thought you were talking not. about the grocery bags. The, yes, she says she keeps, oh, she keeps a bunch of the reusable ones. I thought yeah. she kept the plastic ones. No! No, okay. no. I'm lost. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, everyone was visualizing you <laughs> using the reusable bags to pick up dog And then wash, washing them out yeah, after? clean it out. No. Reuse the it. The plastic grocery bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great she, for picking up dog poop. No, they're too big. Just... I got a big dog. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's time for the Nostalgia Hop with Ryder and Lisa on Play 107. So yeah, the concept is simple. We've both drawn up lists of things that'll bring you back to simpler days. You just tell us whose list hits you in the feels harder. 
Remember recording your favorite songs from the radio onto a cassette? But you'd be super annoyed that the DJ was talking over the intro. <laughs> Pretending to smoke when you could see your breath in the cold. Ooh, Just taking huge hauls. When your mom would leave you and your siblings in the car as she went in for groceries and you would give strangers the middle finger, the middle finger, because you thought your back what? windows were tinted. We all did it. I don't know if we did. Your parents making you call relatives and mailed you birthday gifts <laughs> and talk the to them worst. on the phone. Ugh. What's there to talk about? Finally being allowed to go to the pool without your parents and trying to sit in the steam room, but only lasting 20 seconds. <laughs> 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 Drawing on the door a little bit and then yeah. taking off. Yeah. Thinking all the adults thought you that you were the life of the party at any wedding you were at because you'd rip around the dance floor and spill pop everywhere. But really, they were like, when are the kids getting picked up? <laughs> yeah. Eating a push pop, or I guess like sucking on a push pop, um, but then it getting this like pool of flavored drool and your finger would get all wet when you'd push on it. So gross. Uh, using the cap of your drink as a shot glass. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Hardcore smoking and drinking. Okay. <laughs> Whose list brought you back to your childhood more? Do, should we spit fire ours real yes. quickly? Recording your favorite songs from the radio to a cassette. When your mom would leave you in the car when she went for groceries and you would give strangers the finger. Uh, being allowed <laughs> to go to the pool for the first time without your parents and sitting in the steam room for four seconds. And getting a push pop and having flavored drool dripping everywhere. Pretending to smoke when you can see your breath in the cold. Your parents making you call relatives to thank them for birthday gifts. Thinking all the adults <laughs> thought you were the life of the party at the wedding, ripping around the dance floor, but you were just annoying. <laughs> and using the cap of your drink as a shot glass. <laughs> I want a kid to give me the finger at the grocery store, oh, like in the parking lot My now. My sisters and I were the worst humans. As soon as mom, <laughs> as soon as Deborah closed the door, to our Aerostar and is, walked into the Safeway. We were like throwing out middle fingers left, right, and center. Nobody leaves their kids in the car anymore. Not so. anymore. Ah, the good old days. Yeah. Let us know who you think won that. Play 107. It's Ryder and Lisa. You're looking at the champion. Well, okay. you're actually not looking. You're listening to the champion of today's Nostalgia Off. Thank you for the votes. It was a great round. Apparently, not a lot of us as children waited for our parents in the car and just flipped the bird to strangers. I guess you thought that was an everybody I, thing. I That's thought a, all kids did that. Just a you thing. I think it would make me laugh if I saw it now. Also, but you people mentioned don't leave their kids in their car anymore. You mentioned hanging out in the steam room. Uh, when you were young, and I don't know if that's really relatable, too, because most people, when they would walk into a steam room, there'd be, like, a <laughs> older, overweight dude in a Speedo just breathing heavy in the corner, and you'd be like, ah, this ain't it. I'm going back to the diving board. Why was there always someone in there with just, that exact descri description? Just chilling. But they'd, ne oh, they'd be in there for four hours. Hairy chest. Yes! Heavy breath. And they wouldn't talk to you, which is probably the right thing. Like now as the creepier that they wouldn't talk to you now as the heavy set man who likes to use the steam room. <laughs> You're full circle. If a kid walked in, the last thing I would do is talk to the child. Oh, true. Yeah. You just keep your distance. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, no, I don't know if yours was as relatable as you thought. Okay. So sorry. It's fine. It was a tough one for you today. Okay. So I wanted to discuss, uh, there's a private Facebook group that, we're all going to want to be a part of, even though we don't live in Calgary. Maybe we should make one here in Edmonton. So I saw this tweet from Meg. It says, I've joined a private Facebook group called Are We Dating the Same Guy, Calgary? Ooh, juicy. And let me tell you, it does not disappoint. So now I'm invested. I want to know everything. Mm -hmm. The first response to it, get this, says, oh my God, I was dating this guy. And at work on Monday, one of my friends was like, let me tell you about this guy who ditched my friend in the middle of a date this weekend. It was totally the guy who asked me to come pick him up because he was done, quote unquote, drinking with the guys. They figured out it was the yep. same guy. So, yes, women are detectives. OK, but also if you're on a date and it's not going well, yeah. is it not your prerogative to say like, hey, thanks a lot for this. I got to run. I just think it's funny that they discovered it was the same yeah. person. But now everybody's like hating on this guy. No, I don't You're... think people are hating on it. My mom had a quote, and I uh, I always respected it. When it came to dating, this isn't like once you're in a relationship. Okay. This is just when you're dating. 
She says, like, you gotta find a few pairs of pants to try on before you, like, buy a pair. So she said, like, when you're dating, date a bunch of people. Yeah, and I've heard the same quote about finding a therapist. It's like dating. You gotta shop around. You're not gonna fall in love with the first therapist that you sit down with. Right. So just keep trying until you can groove with someone. Until that, you decide what your favorite pair of pants are. Try on a bunch of pants. Try on a bunch of pants. Try out a bunch of therapists. Get out there. <laughs> do your thing. You know, and I finally discovered a pair of pants that I love. I wear them all the time. I have one pair of jeans. See, there you go. Tara was having an argument with her wife about music opinions, so wanted to hear our unpopular music opinion. So... Why, we want to hear from you as well. 780-784-7107. What's your opinion that everyone always gets mad at you for? Mine is that I don't like you two. <laughs> I just don't understand how you can't like you two. I, get I think that, the song Vertigo ruined them for me. I hate it. I feel like you can say that like for a good stretch that they were overplayed. Like They were on every station there for mm. in the 90s, early 2000s. But they have so many jams. No. I, just... I like their one song... One. One with, it has to be the one where Mary J. Blige is on it with you two. That's the only one I'll listen to. My unpopular opinion. Wow. Tara wrote in saying Pussycat Dolls are top five girl bands ever. I will die on this hill. I guess I won't do mine then. Oh, eh? sorry. No, it's oh, fine. Oh, no, what's yours? Oh, uh, you missed it. You probably don't have one. I do. What is it? I don't think it would be hard to write a hit country song dare you to try. Uh, yay. I'll do it in like the next 10 minutes. Here we go. <laughs> Unpopular music opinions. It's 780-784-7107. It's the 90s at 9 with Ryder and Lisa. Okay, so Lisa, not me, listener Lisa says, my unpopular music opinion is that Christina Aguilera is a better vocalist than Ariana Grande. I don't know if that's unpopular, is it? Maybe. I would agree with that. I find her a lot... Um, Nicer to listen to. Hmm. Um, we got this hot take on the text line. Bohemian Rhapsody is terrible and people only like Come it on. because they're told they have to. <laughs> Anna says, I'm not a fan of Stevie Wonder's songs. I recently told this to my husband of 12 years. He's not sure if it's going to work out. Wow. Heavy. <laughs> the one about Bohemian Rhapsody, there's like 15 different parts of that song you could like or hate. So it's hard yeah. to say it's a terrible song because there's. Well, that's it's, why it's a, it's such it's like an a unpopular opinion. Montage of songs. Okay. Uh, mine was that I could write a hit country song in minutes. And you've done this? Literally. I found a uh, guitar strumming on YouTube, and I've started writing lyrics to it. I think it includes everything that's needed for a hit country song. Okay, let's hear it. Now, this is, I don't know if this is a chorus. I don't know if this is a verse, but it's called uh, Today's Woes. Wow. Are you ready? Yes. I know I shouldn't have stayed. When we switched to whiskey, I should have said no. Oh, but God. everything about yesterday is worth today's woes. Now this headache <laughs> won't go away, and somehow I lost my wallet and phone. But everything about yesterday is worth today's woes. I know you're trying to move on and meet someone nice, and we should let our past go. But everything by yesterday is worth today's woes. That's all I got so far. It's, you went you you went from like a certain kind of country singer to a different one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was like, just showing yeah, you the, the versatility range. there. Yeah, the range. Yeah, I went from like Toby Keith to Johnny Cash there. And sure. then to what's his name? What's the guy that goes? My truck got stuck in the core blonde a little bit. Yeah. But it, the theme of the song is that he he's partying, drinking beers on the back road. And uh, in the barn, probably. And he's got a headache and hungover. But then you find out it's actually with an X. Whoa. Wh that yesterday's woes. Right? The Rider and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Action Furnace. Fixed right or it's free. Play 107.